Grace and peace, beloved. This is William Mack with Rooted Ministries, and um, we're so glad to have you guys um, back with us this week as we just spend some time together um, on this pod. I got my my friend, my colleague, Pastor Kevin Hu, with me. Hello, everybody. Um, And he and I always joke that we probably should press record before we start a pod because I think we both believe we get the good stuff out and then we hit record and we're both kind of like, uh, <laughs> but, um, there was something that came up and, and, and he and I were talking about it. And I think for me, it resonated deeply just because of where I am physically. Um, I've got some, I've had a medical procedure coming up. No big deal. Um, no but deal. it, for me, would you say no big deal? Come on. It's not, it's not. Well, lift up prayers for brother Mac. Just, just, we won't get into details, but lift we up won't prayers. get into details, but I will say that as I have been preparing, I've been thinking about just the role of just physical wellness and for pastors. Um, I, I know for me personally, um, that was not something that I really thought about for, um, a long period. I mean, I wanted to stay healthy, stay alive for my children, but for most of my pastoral career, um, I was so busy going and doing, it wasn't until I got sick or started feeling something wrong in my body that I was intentional about taking care of myself. And so now that I'm in a season where I'm not necessarily tethered to a local church, um, I made a commitment to myself at the top of the year to just do the full body scan. So I went to a doctor back in February. I said, do all the tests like blood work, scans, x-rays. I just want to know what's going on. And that was largely due in part to um, I'm, I'm getting up in age and I don't really know my father's medical history. So my father's side of the family was adopted. I don't know that side of my medical history. So I just wanted to know. Anyway, um, I recognized that that was the first time in 40 plus years that I was being intentional about my physical health. And I wonder for you, brother, sister, pastors who are listening today, when we think about caring well for the people in our congregation, I don't think there's a pastor that's listening to us today that if we had a congregant, a member who needed support with their physical health, that we wouldn't go as hard as we could to make sure they got what they needed. We'd make sure that they got th- to the doctor's office. We'd make sure that they you know, got their uh, prescriptions. We'd make sure that they met with their mental health professionals. We'd even be a place of accountability. But how often are we doing that for ourselves? The reality is, um, is that our, our, our well-being matters. Um, and, and I'm not just talking about physical health. I'm talking about mental health, heart health. Those of you who've listened to me in the past know that I'm a big believer in taking care of our, our minds and our souls. Mm-hmm. Um, but you are so important beyond your role as a pastor um, that we just kind of wanted to highlight that today. So, uh, so Kevin, I'm going to volley the ball over to you. But when you were serving as a local church pastor, was that something that was at the forefront of your mind? Like, where am I physically? Where am I mentally? Like, is my is my health in a good place? I think, I mean, that's harder for me because when stress kind of gets overwhelming, my out, my coping mechanism is actually food. Mm-hmm. Right, not exercise, not going for a run. It's actually food, and so I would say for the harder seasons of ministry, when life felt overwhelming, that's usually when I would see the most weight gain. And it's one of those those things in, in my mind too. Is you know, like someone going through something or tasks needing to be done at church, some crisis happening, people that get need to get you know get gotten back to, or people coming over and you're hosting them. It's like I think. It's very easy to say, I will deal with this later. Mm -hmm. I'll address this later. I'll go on a diet or a purge later. I'll go to the doctor later. Um, Because when life comes at you that fast, like the last thing you do, I think at least for the the heart and the mindset of a a typical pastor, shepherd type, I think that when life comes at you that way, the last thing you usually think about is your own Mm well-being. And so I would say, yeah, I could relate to a lot of what you're talking about already as you're opening up this talk. Yeah. 
it's um it's interesting because you know you hate the fact that you don't really pay attention to it until something quote unquote uh, comes up like a crisis comes up um but you're, but you're absolutely right. And I think, you know, just, you know, personally, I think you and I both kind of shared, like, you know, the weights going up and down and, right. you know, the struggles, all that goes along with it. Um, but I wonder what would happen if we as pastors were more intentional. Um, and, you know, we stress this a lot about loving the person that God loves. Right. And God loves you. Yeah. Um, but when we embody the love of Christ for ourselves, that means that we embody the love for our bodies, our minds, all the full being that Christ loves. Um, and so one of the, one of the, one of the things that has come up for me is just, you know, we know that we get busy with the ministry of the church. There's always things that are coming up. There's, (laughs) there's budgets that need to be met. There are sermons that need to be preached. Um, but what would it look like? And when was the last time? And I'm asking this, of everybody that's listening, but when's the last time that you've actually stopped and done a full assessment of yourself? Like, how am I physically? How am I mentally? How is my soul? How are my relationships? Um, because all of those matter when we talk, talk about our well-being. Um, I wonder, man, like, why do, why do you think we, we don't hear this emphasized as much as we should in like church or even in our, our, you know, I think our denomination does a pretty okay job with telling us to take care of ourselves as much as possible. For those of y'all that are watching my face, um, (laughs) could tell that I'm not really too convinced of that, but, um, how, how, how come you think we don't hear, um, enough about that? Just even as you were talking about earlier about being kind of healthy and looking out for ourselves, I started just thinking about all the different pastors and leaders that I've come across where their definition of health is different and Mm, how they were raised. Right. And so how they, how they were raised in the environments they were in, whether they went to a certain kind of um, seminary versus going to B school, like business school and then coming out of that and feeling a call, it's like their drive and their motivation and their passions are different. And so you, you take that variable and that already is, is pretty crazy in itself. But then you've got, a host of congregants where again diverse crowd like even if they all look similar mm-hmm. they all have very different experiences and backgrounds some of them when you talk about hey do you feel love and they go yes but there's no sweetness no tenderness no kindness to it they they were raised in an environment where it was all about duty and love was experienced through loyalty duty and, and performance and all these other things mm-hmm. you ask another person there's none of that it's just it's almost like coddling, you know, it's like, it's, it's an overemphasis on the emotions when it comes to love. And so when you, when you mix all of that together, plus the fact that most congregants don't know what, and don't, will never know what it's like to be a pastor. Mm-hmm. will never know what it's like to, to carry that kind of burden on a regular basis. Naturally, there's a miss. It's like the pastor should be performing. The pastor should be the one smiling and healthy and putting me first because they're, they're elected into this role. Right. They're, ho- they're holy. They're yep. preaching the scripture. They're the, they're the star, and I tithe, and so therefore, y'all need to be about me. Mm-hmm. And so now you've got the pastor on the flip side. No one's helping them point out their blind spots, maybe, right? And, and hurting. Then you've got the the all the crazy dynamics of marriages where the spouse feels like their job is to support the pastor and support God and support the church. So the best thing they can do is just put their head down and not say anything. Mm-hmm. And my gosh, like that is a perfect, usually a, like a, to, to varying degrees, I feel like that is a perfect recipe for that same pastor to not see the areas that they're hurting. Yeah. Whether physical, emotional, spiritual, mental, all of it. Yeah. Anyways, that's, that's my little, what was it? No, it's, shot that's, that's right so there. good. And I think it ties into the thought, a thought that I had, um, you know, we, we train pastors and uh, and some consciously kind of hold on to this idea that we are not supposed to be the strong ones, right? We are supposed to be the ones that are available. We are supposed to be the ones that are sacrificial, right? And sometimes I think that that mindset, that sacrificial mindset means even if I got to sacrifice myself, this is what I'm supposed to do, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah. That that I don't have time or, I'm, or I can't 
um, make time for me because that's somehow, you know, and I think that's such a twisted lie of the adversary to somehow shame us into caring about, again, the person that God cares for. Like right. God cares about your blood pressure. God cares about your cholesterol. God, God clear, cares um, about your creaky knees. He cares about all those things, right? right. right. <laughs> and somehow or another, again, um, we we shame ourselves or we believe the lie of the adversary that then sets in shame if we start thinking, hey, maybe I don't need to do this. Maybe I don't need to do that. Or maybe I should go check in on myself. Case mm-hmm. in point, I have a, a, a dear friend of mine who is um, a new pastor and she started experiencing um, some dizziness, vertigo, couldn't quite figure it out. Um, and the doctors are still trying to figure out what's going on. But she has to stand up every Sunday to preach. And so she was like, I cannot stand up and preach. So somebody from the congregation said, then sit down and preach. Just sit down. And she struggled with that. Mm. Sit down and I mean, preach from a sitting position. <laughs> and I said, well, why not? Like, you're still preaching. You're just, yeah. she said, but I'm not standing. And I was like, yeah, but do you understand that your congregation made the recommendation? You're talking to me about it. I don't see a problem with it. The only person that's struggling with this right now is you. Is you. Yeah. There is something in you that says the preacher has to stand. Hmm. You know, and there's probably other things that are speaking to her that like, what if they see, you know, the female pastor sitting down and what does that mean? And da, da, right. da, da, da. But at yeah. the end of the day, it's OK for you to take care of you and serve mm-hmm. the congregation. Yeah, it doesn't have yeah. to be a one or it can be a both. And and so yeah. um, I think that whole idea of, of, of sacrifice has somehow become miscued as well. And because we think that it is sacrificial and it is what God has called us to do in this particular role, then I'm supposed to put put my complete self out there on the altar. Yeah. Now, I, I think to build off of that, you know, you and I were having this conversation yesterday about how, you know, it could be something that is very broken or unhealthy that can somehow bring about something that God uses and redeems. Hmm. Right. And sometimes we'll look at that and we'll go, hey. This was a this is a perfect fairy tale. This is a great story. It's like no, just because God redeems something and uses something, it doesn't mean like it was good or healthy to begin with. Mm-hmm. Like that's just His power. That's His goodness and His work. But I was just thinking, you know, while you were talking, um, you know, when I think of serving in the church, and this is how I grew up thinking of it: is you should sacrifice. You, Jesus didn't say come and like you know dance on this like flowery field with me and everything's going to be kosher. It's it's pick up your cross and follow me. Deny yes. yourself. And yes. so that stuff is in my core, in my being. And so that almost it's like every time I I remember those early years of serving in, in, as a pastor. If, if I ever had a moment of just sitting back and saying like thank you God, this is such a beautiful moment of rest. I felt guilty about it. Oh, absolutely. You know what I mean? Because it's like there's always something to do. Like, what are you talking about? Like, I think there's like this proverb, right? Like a little hand folding, a little chilling or whatever it is. And like poverty will come upon you. Yes. There's like this sense of like, I yes. will rest when I die. When I die. Yes. So, so I look at that and I go, if you're someone from that camp and you, you feel that, like you've always had maybe more of a bandwidth, you've had stronger willpower than a lot of people, you have more drive, that might be your sweet spot. You might be saying to yourself, no, no, this is how ministry ought to be. And yeah. then you look at the other extreme. And you go, because I don't want to be that, which is a culture that can co- like maybe like coddle you too much or overemphasize the individual and say, it's all about you. It's all about your comfort. It's all about what you're getting out of it. It's all about all this other stuff. And you might look at that and go, man, I'm not falling for that. That's the yeah. enemy right there. Yeah. But something you remind me of a lot is just like, why does it have to be either extreme? Yeah. It's like, I think God has directives and a calling on our lives. But he also loves you and cares about, to your point, how you're doing, your health, physically, emotionally, mentally, all of that. You know, I wonder if he cares about my creaking knees, but, you know, I I, I wrestle with it. It's like I always feel like I'm, I have to be one extreme or the other. Yeah. It's like how do yeah. you find that balance? How do you how do you create healthier boundaries as a pastor then? And, and that's, so I think, that's the piece oh, that we're always trying to figure out. Like, oh, what's, yeah, the, what's yeah. the how do we how do we level that out? How do we balance? Um, 
this whole idea of like, um, cause as you were speaking, I was thinking about it, you know, I came into before I pastored, um, before I planted, you know, I served as an associate pastor for several churches and then an interim pastor. And then we planted, you know, and church plant culture is grind for his glory, grind, 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 grind. Right. Yeah. Um, and of course they will never use that slogan, but that's exactly what I call it with hindsight being 2020, you grind and he'll get the glory. And that's such a lie, but that's what we're taught. That's what's reinforced. Right. And so I remember my first maybe four years in supplanting, we didn't take a vacation because hmm. if I was vacation and I wasn't grinding, if I wasn't grinding, he wouldn't get in the glory. Right. Because all of our matrix say that, hey, you got to baptize X amount of people and your capital campaign has to grow. And let's not even talk about the financial sustainability piece. And so you're going, you're going, you're going, you're going, going right. all in the name of Jesus. Right. That's crazy. Hmm. And I don't want to throw anybody out of the bus. And so I'm not going to do that. But I wonder that when we assess churches, especially church planters, um, and and the well being of the ministry that we start first with the well being of the pastor. How are you? When's the last time you've had a checkup? When's the last time you know? You know when's the last time you you talked to a therapist? When's the last time you've had a session with a spiritual director? Like we start there first, and that that begins to, um, in my opinion, reinforce this idea that God cares for you as well. Um, if I can, if I know that somebody's going to be checking in on me, it makes me make sure that I'm doing at least what I need to do. Um, and, and not just accountability. I mean, I should want to do it for myself, but when you come into that culture and that's all it is, is just grind, 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 grind. Um, again, shame sets in the lie kind of gets rooted. And before you know it, you are in a very unhealthy place. Um, trying to do some really good work. Yeah. Yeah. The, the statement that you made, it's crazy that we encourage even some pastors. To do that. And again, this might be unique to just our denomination, um, but I've seen it across the board enough to go. We've seen it enough to know. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's yeah. not just us. It's not um, just us. You know, I was thinking, you know, it's not crazy, though, for a startup. If I'm trying to create a brand or a business, I'm trying to market something, I'm trying to sell a product, like that is literally like a page out of like, I don't know, B-School or something where it's like, you, you you are going to grind. You are not going to take a vacation um, because once you can get your organization establishment going, you know, it's going to be cruise control after that. Right. Yeah. So it's like you have to work harder in the beginning because you need the numbers. You need the money. You need the did, 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 you just go down the list, even if it kills you. And so to me, I go that that seems very normal to me in the world outside of the church. Mm-hmm. I guess my question is, why is that allowed inside the church? Right, right. And and it just makes me wonder. I don't have the answer to this one, so I'm going to defer to you, Mac. But hmm. um, <laughs> it, it makes me feel like that shouldn't be then. No. Right? But, but that's how it is. But it shouldn't be. Dude, it, there's this, you know, part of it is that that mindset somehow puts the responsibility on the pastor to grow the church. Right. Um, and, 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 and maybe that's a conversation that we all need to have with God. Like what is our, our roles and our responsibilities, right? Jesus has already made the sacrifice that needs to be made for us. Right. Um, our responsibility is to go and share, um, and he gives us, you know, different areas and gives us different ways and opportunities in which we are to share and, and to take care of the sheep, but it's not our responsibility to burn out and die out doing it. And I've heard some trust and believe and you're right. It's not just our denomination. Um, I've, I've heard some, some craziness, like, you know, you know, uh, Jesus died at 33. And so I'm trying to knock it out, you know, in 33 years do like Jesus. I'm like, wait right. a minute, stop it. That. Like, stop that. Right. Jesus also got up and you ain't going to do that. Once you did, you done. Um, and so I think that we, we have to be really, really careful about, understanding what our role is. Um, and our role is yes, to say yes to the father and to come alongside what is happening in the kingdom of God, but it's not our role and our responsibility 
to burn out because check it out, brother, sister, pastor, you still a husband, you still a, a wife maybe, um, but you have friends, you have other responsibilities and other roles outside of the role as pastor. And you need to be just as healthy to show up in those roles as you do to show up every Sunday or every week to be the pastor of this congregation that God has entrusted to you. So it really is holistic care, looking at the whole person and in all the spheres of influence, all the spheres of opportunity that God is giving you uh, to to live um, and not just go, OK, I've got to be this person for the church, right? Mm-hmm. Um, for the ministry, because that will, it will, it will kill you. It will absolutely kill you. And I don't know if that answered the question or not. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do think that we have to come back around and ask ourselves and, and get into a rhythm, um, of, of self care and self assessment, um, that will then lead us to the proper actions to take care of ourselves. And so whether that's, you know, you mark it on your calendar quarterly or whatever it is that you do in order to keep your systems and your rhythms going, you need to make sure that you're on that calendar case in point. I said the first four or five years, we didn't take a vacation. Um, I didn't take a vacation, which means we didn't take a vacation. Um, but I do remember that first time that we did take a vacation, man, it was such a refreshing mm-hmm. to Tori and I mm-hmm. um, that I have to admit that that week off, it took me about three, four days to finally get unplugged. And then when I finally did get unplugged, you know, we were able to have some really real, really honest conversations that set a new trajectory for she and I that we put down our personal and our family calendars first before we went to the leadership team Mm. and planned out the church calendar. Mm. Like there were certain days, case in point, like, like the month of May was a blackout month for us. You know, we've got our wedding anniversary, my birthday, um, our son's birthday, two of our son's birthdays, um, uh, mother's days. And there's a whole lot of stuff that's happening in May. So with that being said, plus we from Kentucky. So the Derby's in in May as well. So we celebrate (laughs) that. All of that stuff was happening in the month of May, and that was just not the time for us to be doing a new series and starting a campaign because we weren't there. So um, the church knew that the month of May was a special month for us as a family, for me as an individual, and they gave me opportunities to take rest. And because we were intentional, they were intentional. And I, I just believe in my heart of hearts that the people that you are serving love you enough to see you and will honor your systems if you will allow them the opportunity to to come in and do that. Right. Um, and, and I ain't about to start something, but I'm going to say it anyway because I got the mic. And if they don't, then y'all got a problem on your hands. Hmm. That was that was actually going to be my next piece, because. If if a pastor is noticing that, like they can't put themselves first, they can't they can't put their schedules out there like you did with your with your team. It's just like okay, then then I'm stuck. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's, and then that's an opportunity for you to enter into some prayer and discernment about what's next. Right. Um, because at the end of the day, like yes, you're the pastor, um, but at the end of the day, you all are a community. You all are the body of Christ, mm-hmm. and if one part of the body um, is not functioning well, it affects the rest of the body. And I think that that, that understanding, um, um, that, that understanding needs to be known. It needs to be out there that, Hey, like this is at this point, it's not even like I'm going out on extravagant vacations, you know, every three weeks or whatever the case may be, but I do need this time. Right. Um, and my health does affect the health of the church. Most importantly, though, it it affects the health of my marriage and my family and all these other pieces as well. So please and thank you. And and if this is going to be an issue, then I need to enter some discernment about whether or not either I'm wrong, y'all wrong or or God's wrong and God ain't wrong in this. So we're going to have to figure this thing out. Right. You know, I was going to add to that. You know, I think most of the time, if, if you're a driven type, there's the belief that everything is fine. You know, or this is only just a season, but then you tack in a second season and a third season, a fourth season. And before you know it, you've spent the last 10 years of ministry angry, distant from your spouse and friends, distant mm-hmm. from your kids. And, um, and and this is what I mean. Like there, there's there's different degrees of it. There's nuances. It's different for everybody. 
you know, because some folks, I think, are able to run a little bit harder than other individuals yep. and balance it and, and have good boundaries and invest in everybody's life. Um, you know, but I'm frequently reminded, you know, we all have the same 168 hours in a week. Some might sleep more, you know, sleep, might spend more time in the gym or doing whatever else. But the reality is we all have the same amount of time. Mm-hmm. And so if you're running 100 miles an hour all the time and everyone's still smiling, that doesn't mean everything is okay. That doesn't mean everything is healthy. You're you're not able to give time um, as much as you think, maybe to yourself, to your spouse, to your kids. And and that's what I mean. I think it's it's... It's it's tricky, right? It's, it's it's tricky for everybody. Sometimes I look at back at my life and the, the the most intense time of ministry. There were moments I wish someone came alongside of me and said, "Dude, you you do need to kind of suck it up. Yeah, <laughs> you do need to focus right now and, yeah. and focus a little bit more on the individuals around you." Mm-hmm. Then I wish there were times when see someone came alongside me and like, "My brother, you are so unhealthy right now. Yes, you think you're helping everybody, but you are one donut away from a heart attack." Your kids feel so distant from you. Your wife is getting all of your leftovers, and you're barely putting out the fires in the church. Like, you need to let God step in now, man. It's not yeah. just you. Yeah. And I wish I had that in different seasons. Yeah. And I just didn't see it. I didn't yeah. see it. Yeah. And that, yeah, that's it, still something that happens it, to me today. It, and, and listen, man, it's one of those things that I think as we get older, we definitely appreciate the gift of self-assessment and self-awareness. But I am grateful because you said, I wish I had. I did have. And I, I know for a fact, I took offense when a couple of people said, told me a few times, right? <laughs> you know, shout out to my brother, Jamel Armstrong. He was like, bro, you can't keep going at this rate. Like you are going mm. to, you are going to burn out. And he came to my office from the other side of town with a book by Wayne Cardero called Leading on Empty. Whoa. He said, you were on my heart this morning. It wasn't a used copy. It was a new copy. So he don't went to the bookstore, right? <laughs> Got me the book, brought it over to me. He said, I want you to read this and I don't want you to be like chapter one. Wow. That's love, man. That's love. That's incredible. My wife said, Hey, um, and we had the times of grind and she's like, Hey, I think we need, we want to ramp it up. I'm like, I agree with you. You know, let's do it. Um, but then there was also times where she was like, so when are you taking vacation? And she very gently said it, very kindly said it. And she said a couple of, I was like, you keep talking about vacation. We ain't got to have a vacation. We're about to do that. Da, 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 da. She goes, no, you need vacation because you're tired. Mm. You're tired and, and your preaching's tired. Oh, and wow. I was like, oh, oh yeah, that's what she said. That's what she said. <laughs> um, and I, I looked at her and I was like, behalf. Satan, get thee behind me. No, I'm just playing. No. <laughs> But honestly, man, I was, I was so quote unquote driven or I so believed the lie that I couldn't hear them at that time. Right. Mm. And it took a a, a few more months of me running on empty before I finally started realizing like, I am not good. Um, And so, yeah. So now I'm hyper aware of it. At least I'm trying to be hyper aware of it. Um, because I know of the downfalls. And so for those that are listening to this podcast, like I, I, I want to, I want to bring this in. This is, this is what we don't want you like. This is us loving you and saying, brother, sister, I see you. And we mm-hmm. know exactly what the grind feels like. And we know what's at stake. Like I'm not, I don't want to make that small because I know that there are souls out there that need to be reached. I know that there are parishioners that need to be loved on and cared for. Well, I know that this world is crazy and like, Sometimes it feels like a dumpster fire. And so you're praying right. about a word from the Lord that will continue to give hope and love and grace to his people. And I also know that you are just one person. Mm. You need sleep. You need a healthy meal. You need to take care of yourself. And you don't need to do it just so you can be a better preacher on Sunday. You need to do it because God loves you. Mm. And you need to take care of the one that when you look in the mirror, God loves that person too. And so um, to those who are listening, I, I literally, that's the whole point of this conversation. Like we just want you to know, to take a pause, to take a breath um, and just kind of look at where you are right now. Like, are you good physically? Are you good emotionally? Are you good spiritually? And if not, what are you going to do next? 
mm. to make sure that you are taken care of so that you can continue to do what God has created and called you to do. And on that 30 minute mark right there, <laughs> mic drop. Amen. Oh, man. Thanks oh, for that's being good. on here. We received that. No, thank you. Thank you for raising the topic. And uh, yeah, we got a lot to think about. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> Grace and peace, y'all. Till next time. All right, y'all.